Hi everyone, in this tutorial we learn how to use integrals and integration to calculate the area enclosed by a curve and the x-axis between two values of x. And to do that we're going to work through the example we see here, in which we're told calculate the area enclosed by y equals to sine of x and the x-axis for x values between 0 and 3 pi over 2. Ok, well let me just write SOL as in solution. And now the first thing I like to do is to draw the graph that I'm actually dealing with here, so in this case y equals to sine of x, as well as shade the area that I'm trying to calculate. In this case we're dealing with the curve y equals to sine of x, and if I draw that curve between say 0 and 2 pi it would look something like this. There we go. And so it starts right here at 0, it crosses the x-axis at pi, and meets the x-axis again at 2 pi. It reaches its maximum height right there of 1 when x equals to pi over 2, and reaches its minimum height right here of negative 1 when x equals to 3 pi over 2. Ok, and now the area we wish to calculate is the area enclosed by this curve and the x-axis for x values between 0 and 3 pi over 2. And to really get a visual on that I'll shade that area, so that would be this part here that's above the x-axis as well as the first half of this area underneath the x-axis. So that's this area right here. Ok, so this shaded area is what we need to calculate. And here's how to calculate it. We can state that the area is equal to the integral from 0 to 3 pi over 2 of the absolute value of sine of x. When calculating an enclosed area this absolute value around the function is very important. And here's why. The shaded area that we're trying to calculate basically comes in two parts. Indeed we have one area which is above the x-axis, and that area can be thought of as a positive area, and we have this second area here which is below the x-axis, and that can be thought of as a negative area. And so to make sure that the positive and negative areas don't cancel each other out, we apply this absolute value which will turn any negative area into its opposite, and therefore into a positive area. And here's how that works. The first thing we need to make a note of is the value of x at which the curve crosses the x-axis. So in this case that's at pi. Now that we've made a note of that we're going to split our integral into two integrals, and the first integral will be from 0 to pi. So that's the integral from 0 to pi of the absolute value of sine of x. We add to that the second integral, and in this case we'll go from pi to 3 pi over 2, so that's from pi to 3 pi over 2, and that's still of the absolute value of sine of x. And now that we've split our integral into two, we take care of these absolute values. For the first one from 0 to pi, the curve of sine of x is above the x-axis. In other words, sine of x is positive. So these absolute values are doing absolutely nothing at all, and we can get rid of them without changing anything. So we can already write that that first integral is the same thing as the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x. And we add to that the second integral. And for this second integral on the other hand, from pi to 3 pi over 2 the curve of sine of x is underneath the x-axis, in other words it's negative. Consequently, the absolute value will turn sine of x into its opposite, in other words, negative sine of x. And with that in mind I rewrite the second integral as the integral from pi to 3 pi over 2 of negative sine of x. Finally, taking this negative outside of the integral, we can state that the area is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x, minus the integral from pi to 3 pi over 2 of sine of x. There we go. And it's worth mentioning that what this absolute value actually results in is subtracting any area that's underneath the x-axis. And provided we keep that in mind we can avoid doing all of this working here. Indeed we could have gone straight from the initial sketch here to the result we have here. All we would have to keep in mind is that the area underneath the x-axis needs to be subtracted. That being said, I carry on. All of the groundwork is now done, and all that's left to do is evaluate each of these two definite integrals. And so using the fact that the integral of sine of x 
is equal to negative cosine of x plus some constant of integration c, we can go ahead and state that the area equals to the following. Negative cosine of x evaluated at pi minus its value at zero minus negative cosine of x evaluated at three pi over two minus its value at pi. And now, although we don't have to, I like to take this negative outside of these square brackets, which leads to negative cosine of x evaluated at pi minus its value at zero plus cosine of x evaluated at three pi over two minus its value at pi. And so that's equal to negative in square brackets cosine of pi minus cosine of zero plus in square brackets cosine of three pi over two minus cosine of pi. And now cosine of pi equals to negative one and cosine of zero equals to one and cosine of three pi over two equals to zero and cosine of pi is equal to negative one again. So this first pair of brackets will be negative one minus one, which is negative two. And with this negative in front, it turns into two. And I add to that the result obtained from this second pair of brackets, which will be zero minus negative one. So that's zero plus one, in other words, one. Finally, we can state that the enclosed area is equal to two plus one, which is just three. And that's the answer. And there we go. That's how we can calculate the area enclosed by a curve and the x-axis between two values of x. And that's it for this tutorial.